This, my friends, is the Tribit Flybud C1. And yes, if you haven't noticed already, the earbuds market is so choked full right now that once you've C1, you've seen them all. Wow, even by my standards, that was bad. But nevertheless, the C1, it seems, thinks that it has what it takes to separate itself from the pack, mainly in terms of design, operation, and price. Could that be true? Well, in this video, I'm gonna check out the specs with you guys and run it through some random tests, and then I'm gonna present some pros and cons and then give it a final score. Why don't you join me as we find out after these messages? And oh yes, remember to subscribe and like this video. Let's do it that way. <laughs> So here we are with the Tribit Flybud C1. Let's dig into the specs here, guys. On board is the new and fast becoming standard Qualcomm 3040 chipset, thank goodness, running Bluetooth 5.2 with support for AAC, SVC, and aptX. Water resistance is set at IPX5, so that's perfect for heavy sweating and rain if you have to. Battery life is set at 12 hours according to Tribit, but I was managing closer to like 9.6 hours on average at 65% volume. That's quite far off the mark, but that being said, it's still bloody strong when you compare it with the competition. The weight for each earbud is 4.9 gram so that's about average still pretty light though the case has this really nice grippy texture you can't see it here but it's really nice to hold in the hand and when you combine it with the size and the rounded corners it's really darn parmable the overall build quality is solid and good materials is used all throughout even uh, including the earbuds uh, there's a button up front here if you press it it lights up and you can check up check out the battery level on the case itself and each of these leds represent 25 percent there's a USB-C charging port at the bottom and by the way in case you're wondering you can't sit this upright it has to be rested on its back or its front you can't sit it up like this uh, there's a notch right here for your fingers and it's a good depth so when you combine it with the thinness of this it's really easy to pop open like so unfortunately check this out the lid does not lock in place boo and for what it's worth, it seems like the hinge assembly right here could be made of plastic. I don't see any kind of metal or pins poking out anywhere. And I could be wrong completely, but if it is plastic, make sure you don't apply any kind of heavy force or twisting motion like this because that's a weak point. Uh, as you can see, there's shiny plastics both at the top here and in the cavity or the cavity for the earbuds itself. And especially this kind of stem style design cases with this long channel down here is going to be a challenge to keep clean, especially since the charging connectors are way at the bottom. You have to make sure you're on top of cleaning these things or you're going to have uh, problems charging it. Now, I want to show you how to remove these things. They're not the easiest ergonomically because of the shape or, or the dome shape of the earbuds itself. They're mostly smooth and rounded. So unless your hands are super dry, it's going to be a challenge. And what the easiest way I found is right here at the bottom. You put your thumb right here and you pinch like this. It just pops right out. Any other way, if you're not focusing, it's just going to be hard. Now, I want to show you the earbuds right here. I love the design of these things. They're at least for the price. They're really different to make themselves stand out. I like this little uh, red plastic grill right there. There. It's um, there's two microphones, one at the top right there and one at the bottom, and there is an LED status light that's not bright, it just flashes just right. Uh, but it is shiny plastics all around. It'll show, or at least on the cap right here, it shows up, scratches quite easily. And this uh, polycarbonate casing right here is not grippy. It's quite slippery all around, so something to take note of anyway. But overall, the build is decent. There are seam lines here and there. Uh, what else am I missing? Oh yes, the button control here on the stem. This, this has no touch controls. It has single and double press as well as hold for volume up, down on either side. If media is playing, if media is off, when you hold this down, it activates uh, voice assistant. And I have no idea what drive ty driver type or size this is in here, but my guess is probably uh, five or six. But sound is ported through this uh, mesh covered or grill cover uh, with the large lip around the rim uh, for the ear tips. Now, Tribit provides like six sets of ear gels all together. So, you know, you're gonna be easy to find a good size that fits you, but they're not the easiest to install. Let me try to show you this one on, on screen. Yeah, if you're not focusing, it's just gonna be super tough. Hey, look, second try, that's not bad. Usually it takes me four, three or four tries until I get it right, but at least it behaves on screen this time. Now, for all of this, you need like $70 of your hard-earned cash to play. And unfortunately, black is the only external color option at the moment. It's getting chilly, and look at that view. I love that shot right there. The sun is coming up and fall colors here in Maine. Yeah, I love it. And this is hilarious. Uh, whenever I put these on for the first time, you know the audio cues uh, that you hear? Uh, there's an American lady's voice who's like super excitable or something like that. There's an exclamation mark behind every single word she says, like powering on, pairing, connected, 
Yay! <laughs> it's pretty funny. But anyways, uh, let me start playing media here. I have Robert Glasper playing better than, you better than I imagine. It's one of the new songs that I picked up. Really awesome song. Uh, I have the phone playing the song in high fidelity on Deezer at the end of my deck here. And how this uh, test works, it's not scientific, but if you're new to this channel, thank you for watching this. Uh, we're going to walk from line of sight, past line of sight a little bit to see when these things start having connection issues. So the C1s have Bluetooth 5.2 as we determined earlier. Uh, and there's the phone over there and where I'm standing is around 25 feet. This is direct line of sight. I'm going to walk past the side of my house here and I'm already getting connection issues. Look at that, it's really sputtering. But it's pretty much right on specs, right where I'm standing is around 32, 32 feet, 31. So yeah, it's performing as expected. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you uh, from the, on the rest of my driveway here. Let's get out of the sun there. And we'll see when these things completely disconnect when I get... Maybe... Wow, she's excitable. She's like disconnected, but it's a little bit surprised. She's saying disconnected. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love these earbuds for that too. Um, and so I'm going to walk back and see when we get back in range if they continue to play automatically. Most don't. And we'll just... Just to see. And you can see the fit of these in my ears. It's super comfortable, super light. Uh, it helps that their weight distribution is pretty good in my ears. And they stick out, you know, like stems up. Connected! She's so excited. Look at her. Oh my goodness. Doesn't play as I, expect, as I expected. Just press the button and it plays. Let's head down to the street right now to check the mics on these to see how they perform. Uh, I hope they do better than some of the other uh, QCC 3040 chips we've tested so far. Uh, so let's head down there right now. Oh boy, I was just listening to a few samples of these a few minutes ago and just was not impressed. Uh, yeah, here comes some bands. I'm gonna switch between G85 and these three ones. And hopefully you can hear for yourselves that when noise suppression has to activate, yeah, the voice quality plummets, it just starts crackling up. It's even more inferior to even the Nexicos from Mexico, the no-name brand that I tested last week. Uh, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? For, for Tribit that has been doing this for a long time, but uh, yeah, it's kind of sad, two mics per side and QCC3040 chip doing all the work, but there's still, it's still kind of not tuned right here. Here comes a nice large truck. Yeah, it's, it's not hot, is it? So don't use this on the roadside, don't use this anywhere. It's just not very good at phone calls, this thing. All right, let me talk about the positives. I didn't think I would like it, but the design itself has kind of sort of grown on me. I mean, if you squint a little bit, that red side plate combined with the surrounding molding kind of reminds me of a baboon in heat or a Cylon helmet. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Battery life is healthy at almost 10 hours, guys, thanks in part to the efficient Qualcomm chip and the fact that there is no energy sapping features like active noise cancellation or pass-through mode to deal with here. Sound quality, thank goodness, is tight all around here with a consumer-friendly, at least to my ears, V-shaped EQ setup. Now, the C1 is not going to give something like, say, the Soundcore Live P3 any kind of sleepless nights, far from it. But I'll tell you what, when I listen to genres like country or neo-soul or R&B, this thing really sings. But that being said, sub bass is a weak sauce here because other buds like say the Sound Peats H1, they manage to hit those notes and stay composed. This thing doesn't even try. The last positive is such a small thing. This has to do with the voice recording that they use for the audio cues. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago. I find the lady's voice here is she's so positive and so excitable. She's genuinely like excited for you when you turn it on and trying to connect and genuinely disappointed when you're disconnected. It's so fun to listen to. I give it a thumbs up here because it's so unique from all the other voices I've heard in all other earbuds so far. All right, time for the negatives. And there are a couple here this time. Well, aside from the fact that there's no sub bass, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. This whole AirPods clone design thing has got to stop, guys. It's lived past its prime. Uh, the other negative doesn't really bug me as much, but I know some of you will be turned off by the comparative lack of features of the C1 compared to other earbuds, such as like wear detection or some kind of app control. And for some of you who say, Aaron, I don't care for apps. I don't need to customize my buds. Think about this. Wouldn't it be great if your device can be updated for fixes and feature add-ons? Think about that. 
So, as one of the 13,527 STEM style earbuds imbued with the latest Qualcomm QCC 3040 chipset launching this year that you find on Amazon out there, the Flybud C1, in my opinion, manages to stand out enough by offering a unique and comfortable design combined with crazy endurance. Don't forget this has 10 hours. Effective controls, I really like the buttons, solid SQ, and a pretty competitive price to boot. But on the other hand, this is so not for you guys if you're looking for good phone call quality because as we heard earlier, this thing really struggles there. Or if you have a fewer buttons, or if you need active noise cancellation or pass through, or if you're looking for a design that's a little bit more discreet. So with all that said, I wanna give the Tribit Flybud C1 a gear up score of 7.8 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get to the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. And by the way, thank you Tribit for hooking me up. But as always guys, this review is based off my own thoughts and my opinions for better or for worse. Well, that's all I got today, guys. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching this. You could be doing something else altogether right now, but the fact that you stopped your day to watch this video, man, I got the feel, so thank you very much. And remember, please subscribe and like this video. Don't just watch. I'm trying to get the 50,000 and your support really would help. Sub and like this video, turn on the bell notification icon and share. Click the share button with your friends and family and your postman and all that. Just click share right now. And visit my Patreon page down here where you can buy me a cup of tea or coffee or leave me a tip or something. That'll be super helpful. Remember to thumbs up if you like this video as well and comment nicely down below. And thumbs down. Hmm. And this is a serious one. Thumbs down to the YouTube algorithm. I got a beef with you. I'm having a, it's killing me right now. This algorithm, I'm not showing up on people's feeds and searches and such. Even people who are subscribed to me, they're like, I didn't know you got a new video. So yeah, YouTube, you're killing me. So if somebody here is watching and is a YouTube person or Google person, help me fix this. Or if you know how to fix this, help me out here. So thumbs down until then, thumbs down to the YouTube algorithm. And if you can, that's why it's so important to share this video. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you guys again for being here. I love you all so much. Remember to do something kind and loving for somebody in this world. Uh, and because, yeah, good stuff starts with you. And yeah, we all need it more than ever with COVID and everything going on. And by the way, don't forget, I still have the giveaway for the MIFO 05 Gen 2 there going. So go to that video, check that out. And, you know, just enter from there. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you the next time. Whoosh.